Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Senior here, and I pray that you're having a wonderful day. And as I say so many times, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, I sincerely hope that uh, you're doing well and that you're walking in the newness of life and walking in uh, what was proclaimed just this past Sunday uh, as your new year, if you will. Exodus chapter number 12, the Lord told the children of Israel on the uh, during the Passover, right before he sent the deaf angel, this shall be a new year for you, a new month for you. It's going to be a new beginning. And Jesus, oh my, some 1,400 plus years later, stood uh, in the upper room of all places with his disciples at the uh, Last Supper, right before he went out and and, and died on the cross and, and uh, uh, gave, died that vicarious death for your sins and mine. He changed the meaning of the sacrament. The sacrament once uh, pointed to what happened when God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Jesus said this sacrament now no longer represents what took place uh, over 1400 years ago. Jesus says, but now it is my body. It represents my body that is going to be uh, broken for you and my blood that will be shared for you. No longer will you participate in the Passover meals, but you will uh, eat this bread and drink uh, this blood uh, that is the wine uh, and in remembrance of me. Remember what? Rem remember how I came? Remember what I taught? Remember how I lived and remember how I died. And three days later, God the Father raised me from the dead. I ascended back to heaven, Jesus says, and he did. And he's coming again, my God. And I'm excited about that. Now, listen, listen, listen. I have been so encouraged by you. I want to thank you you, the listening audience, our friends, our members, those who are able to get here in person, those who have never darkened the doors of our church, those who have discovered us online, those who have been following us uh, for quite some time, I'm telling you, you know how to encourage this preacher, and I am appreciative. And I let me let me say, I want to say this to you. It is something that I that I already I, I was already aware of, but I've just been hardened and strengthened in it even the more. And, and here is, here's, here's what it is. When you stand for Jesus, even on times where it may seem that you're standing alone, the truth is you're not. God has people everywhere. You know, he corrected the mighty Elijah. Elijah thought he was the only one left. God says, no, you're not the only one left. I have 7,000 who have not bowed the knee to Baal, nor worshiped his image. And I have met, I have heard from the 7,000 all over the country. People are writing me, people are communicating with me. L listen to this, if this doesn't touch your heart, uh, nothing will and inspire you to stand. It says this, I am a black American, retired school teacher, believer in Jesus and the Bible. I am concerned for black Christians but you gave me hope. Thank you for being faithful to the God of the Bible. Thank you. Now, I'm, I'm telling you, this is such an encouraging uh, email. A pastor sent me this uh, as a result of the threat from the trans community to Bishop Wooden. Pastor, and he gives his name and he gives the mitch, he names the, the, the Baptist church that he's a part of in Newark, New Jersey. And uh, he says, I am sending out an emergency text and I am placing 
it on our social media to uh, to my people to pray for Bishop Wooden. I've been following him for two years and I appreciate Bishop Wooden's preaching and his theology. Thank you, sir. What a compliment from another man of God. I am a friend and he mentioned who he's a friend of. We are praying for the for Bishop's protection. He is not by himself. Isn't this amazing? He is calling out sin and I want to encourage him to keep preaching. We are with you. What a mighty communication. And it certainly uh, encourages my heart. Listen to this. I just want to tell you that I watched a few of Bishop Wooden's sermons recently and also a few YouTube services. I just want you to know I love everything the bishop is doing and sharing. Praise God. You're so kind. I will be praying for you and your ministry. My church is and it names uh, his church, the church, and we are cast offs from several churches in the area that they're from uh, uh, in Greenville who have become woke. But we are blessed because we are following the word of the Bible and we aren't going to give up or back up. And I just wanted you to know how much I appreciate all you are saying because I've seen your messages. I feel bolder and stronger and confident in the Lord. I uh, I know we are going to overcome this age of negative, unbiblical work of the devil. We've got God, he puts with an exclamation point. We are stronger than we can ever imagine. Amen, preacher. I just had to tell you how much I appreciate you. I've been asking, uh, where have all the good men gone for several years now? Hope is here. God bless you. What an encouraging communication. Look at this. As a pastor over 45 years, I have to commend you for having the courage of your conviction without compromising. You are in my thoughts and my prayers. And this man of God, thank you for this powerful, powerful communication. Listen, people are writing us uh, from all over the country. People are chiming in. I've just read a few. I just just want you to know that, hey, I thank you for taking the time to send an email, for taking the time to pray, for taking the time to send the time to send a word of encouragement. Listen, the work is not in vain. I thank you for it. It encourages me. It blesses me. And one day I'll get a chance. Maybe I'll read Brother Gary some of the texts that I get on the phone where people are texting me saying, keep going, keep going. And these are not people who hide in the shadow of wooden. These are people who are standing flat footed and proclaiming God's truth as well. Some, some of their platforms are greater than mine. Some are larger and some are not. But you know what? Here's what we all know. You take whatever God gives you. You take whatever elevation God gives you. You take whatever numbers God gives you and stand for God. You just don't want to be the guy. Don't be that guy who was given one talent and turns out he proved the distributor of the talents to be correct. Don't take the one and bury it. Take whatever God gives you. Plant it, use it, cry loud and spare not and the Lord will bless you real good. Now I prayed about this little communication, this time of communication. Brother Gary told me never use the word little. So I strike that this time of communication and the Lord spoke to me and said, share this with the audience uh, today. Romans chapter number 12 and verse one, I beseech you therefore brethren, that is both Jew and Gentile. Those who have a, a working knowledge of the book of Romans know that Paul wrote to the church at Rome because there was a divide in the church. The born again Gentiles and the born again 
then Jews in the church at Rome were clashing and Paul writes to them and he talks about the advantage of the Jew. He talks about how the, the Gentiles have been grafted in. He tells us, he tells them to humble themselves to each other and work together and he brings it back together in chapter number 12 and he says to them, I beseech you therefore brethren, Gentile and Jew, black and white, doesn't matter. Listen, if you love Jesus, if you love Jesus, if you're born again, if you believe that the Bible is the word of God, then we are speaking to you. And Paul is talking to you. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Why by the mercies of God? The only way this will be made possible is by the mercies of God. <laughs> I'm sitting here before you because God is merciful and God's mercy, God's mercy strengthens and allows us and gives us the power to keep going from day uh, after day. And mercy is when God doesn't give us what we deserve. And grace is when God gives us things that we don't deserve. I thank God. The prophet Jeremiah said in the Lamentations of Jeremiah that it is of the Lord's mercy. That we are not consumed because his compassion fell if not. And he said, they are renewed every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. I thank God that when we got up this morning, the mercies of God was renewed where we could go and serve and do and, and, and proclaim the truth of God and, and win people uh, to Jesus Christ and live the life before others. Now he says this. I present you, I beseech you, I appeal to you, I beg you, I urge you, therefore, brethren, therefore what? Because, let me tell you, we serve a God that in chapter number 11, verse 36, for of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. When we consider the greatness of our God and that everything really is about him, it's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about the NFL, the NBA, Major League Baseball. It's not about the world of entertainment. It's not about the world of politics. It's not about what China is doing. It's not about what India is doing. It's not even about what America is doing. Everything is about the, about the God of the Bible. And he is going to bring everything to uh, into focus, into view. And it's going to be like he said. Amen. And don't you get discouraged in this day and time. Uh, and, and I want to say this to you, and I'm going a little long, but when you do feel a little discouraged, grab your Bibles and go back to reading it. And as you read and look, you will discover that the Bible reads, it is more current than tomorrow morning's newspaper. And there's nothing happening in the large cities, small cities, uh, outskirts of town, right in the middle of town. Nice neighborhoods, not so nice neighborhoods. There's nothing going on that the word of God has not already addressed. He's in charge. I beseech, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies in this wicked, godless culture. He is calling every believer to present their bodies are living sacrifice. Gary, I believe this is why the devil is attacking the bodies of so many believers now. You see on our bodies, men getting their fingernails polished like women. Do you not know that somebody had a problem with, <laughs> with me speaking out against that? Uh, I'm telling you, some of you, I think that you would have an objection if we said the sky is blue. <laughs> but just keep watching. It's, it, I, you know, I, I really think, I, I tell you what I think, I think, it, I think that email was a catfish. I think that was a, a homosexual, somebody pretending to be a woman who's writing it and, and, and trying to defend men getting their nails polished like women, colored nail polish on, on, on their fingers. And I just don't believe the overwhelming majority of the women of God out there would would give a man the time of day whose nails are painted the color of hers. I just, I, look, I'm not that old and I'm certainly not that out of touch. So, uh, but 
Listen, uh, uh, I think that's why the enemy wants uh, us to cover our bodies with tattoos, excessive piercings. Oh, I talk about it all the time. You got guys now who are wearing their hair like girls and guys, you know, Gary, they're running around. They got to shake the bangs out of there. You got to shake your little bangs out of your eyes. Yo, that's such a girl thing. And, uh, and, uh, it's bad. It's bad that you, that you're not ashamed of that. And I believe that the reason why the enemy is working so hard, even in the body of Christ, for us to be scantily cladded, revealing things that we shouldn't reveal, looking in ways that we ought not to look. I believe that one of the reasons why Satan is doing these things is because he knows that we're called not just to present our spirits, the inner man, but our bodies as living sacrifice. Present your body as a living sacrifice, not dead, not, will not some lamb or goat or bull to be offered on an altar, but to take our bodies and to present them as living sacrifices. Look at this, holy, acceptable, which is well-pleasing unto God, which is your reasonable service, that is, which is reasonable worship. Matter of fact, the word reasonable here comes from a Greek word that gives us the English word logical, logic. When you consider who Jesus is, what he has for us, how good he is, and we become born again, isn't it logical to present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, to walk, uh, uh, to work, to live in the neighborhoods, to carry out stuff, to go to the grocery store, to the mall, to the movies, to the ball game, wherever you may go, to church, to church, to church, <laughs> to church. Believers still go to church, right? To church and look like we belong to the Lord. I don't get all these, these Christians uh, who are disguised as lost folk. <laughs> You call yourself a Christian, but you want to disguise yourself like a clown. Come on, man. Come on, woman. You don't want to be, a, you know, listen, you don't want to be a woman of God disguised as a hoochie. You don't want to be a man of God disguised as a pimp, a player, a drug dealer. And, and here you are saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, but you're disguised as a person who's never been told and who has no idea of the truth of God. Now, what kind of sense does that make? And if we let certain ones have their way, you will try to claim that you know Jesus uh, disguised as a woman and you're a man. Or you know Jesus and uh, you're a woman disguised as a man. The, the devil is a liar. We're called to present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God. We're living in a way that's well-pleasing to God. Well, well, you can't judge me. I'm not trying to judge you, but I do know this. The Bible gives us the standards that are well-pleasing to God. So we're to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable uh, unto God, which is our, it's just logical. It's the logical thing to do. Maybe I will preach today, whatever happened to logic, it's the logical thing for the believer to do. And look at this, my friends. And be not conformed to this world. That is your outward don't let the world, now listen to this, don't let the world be your potter. You remember in Jeremiah, where God said, sent Jeremiah to the potter's house, and the potter saw, uh, Jeremiah saw potter, the potter working a work on the wheel, and that work represented Israel, and how he, he, he fixed it, and he had to do, uh, break it and, and work it over. Now, we're not, the world is not supposed to be our potter. We're not to be uh, outwardly shaped uh, uh, and molded according to what's 
popular in this particular age, the world here, word world here, age, you know, well, you know, you got to keep up with the fashion. You got to keep up with what's going on. You know, you want to make sure you're dripping according to what the world's definition of dripping is. I believe, I believe, I believe ought to look as good as they can, but I think the goal of the first and foremost of the believer is to be holy, well-pleasing and acceptable unto God. That means some styles, some fashions, some haircuts, some looks, some practices. We can't do. Neither should we want to because we want to please the one. We want to please him. We want to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. But instead of being conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Be ye transformed, be ye changed. By what? Look at this. Look at this. The renovations, the renewing of your minds. This is one thing I love about biblical Christianity, and I'm running out of time. But let me tell you something. When you study the word of God, when you're a part of a church where the word is being preached and taught, have you noticed as you hear the word, you're constantly changing, you're constantly growing, your, your views are changing, your values are changing. Oh my, some things that you were all right with before you begin to have a steady diet of the word of God, you're no longer all right with those things anymore. Praise the Lord. You've shifted from whether or not a thing is okay or not okay. The word of God shifts you from talk like that to whether it's right or wrong. <laughs> you see, he, he renews your mind. Nothing is as revolutionary. Nothing moves a person. Nothing changes an individual like biblical Christianity. Uh, look at this. By the renewing of your mind that you may prove, that is, that you may discern, that you may have access to what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God that you may discern or have access to God's good, that is God's useful, his perfect, his complete, his acceptable uh, will. Glory be to God. Now I've gone long in teaching tonight because I wanted to uh, uh, give you this little lesson tonight uh, because uh, tonight, tonight, now we're going to have awesome service, an awesome service at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. But yours truly will be tonight in Mobile, Alabama. God is about to do something great in Mobile. As you know, the presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ, presiding bishop J. Drew Sheard, who's leading our church, and uh, he has reached out to me, and this is my third year serving as director or co-director, serving beside my dear friend and brother, Bishop Michael B. Golden, Jr., and what a tremendous job Bishop Golden is doing. He and I, we work together in the men's ministry, men perfecting men's ministry of the church of God in Christ. And we are excited about what God is about to do in Mobile, Alabama. Our little tagline is mobile in Mobile. Well, tonight we will be in Mobile getting ready for the big rallying service tomorrow night in Mobile, Alabama. We will be in meetings, the Lord's willing, all day uh, Friday, getting ready for the big service uh, Friday night. And then we're going to return to Mobile uh, in May for the great men perform affecting men's conference. And so yours truly is down uh, in Mobile. I'll probably be there or on my way there by the time you see this. I want your prayers. Pray that God give us great victory, that yokes are destroyed in Mobile, that men turn to Jesus Christ, that those who already know Christ are strengthened in the power of his word. It's going to be a tremendous move of God, and we are excited about it. 
But in the meantime, the word of God will be preached here, right here at the upper room, Church of God in Christ with power and authority. And you, my friends, are going to be blessed. Now I've run a little long, but I gave you a little Bible study that I want you to the that I want you to consider. Now, uh, you know, people always ask me, Brother Gary, well, what well what if uh what do I do about, uh, like tattoos and things like that? Well, what do I do about the ones that I already have? You know, I got them before I met the Lord or after, after I met the Lord. I, did, I didn't realize that the Bible says at least four or five times that thou shalt put no markings on your body. What do I do about them now? Well, uh, I like to go by the principle that says, let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor, working with his hands, that which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. You know, the man who stole the flat screen out the store, and then got convicted and gave his heart to Jesus, and he's saved now and he loves the Lord. My counsel to him won't be return the flat screen. <laughs> Because if they catch you trying to break in and put it back, or if, if you take it back, they're going to take you to jail. So... Just as none of us, you know, can't go back and undo the sins that we've committed. Let's just walk in the newness of life. Let's, let's go on from here. Let's not repeat the same mistakes. And let's just serve the Lord. And I, and I believe that's true with everything. You know, we preach, uh, we preach uh, we, to, to save unborn babies. And we say often to those in the audience who may have had an abortion, we are not after you. We're not talking about you. If you repented of your sins, Jesus Christ has forgiven you and washed you clean. And it is as though in the mind of God that that abortion never took place. I've seen women stand up and talk about abortion abortions and things that they've had uh, 20 years ago and 30 years ago and they break out into tears. And I think to myself, oh God, if I get a chance to talk to them, I want to tell them accept the Lord's forgiveness. Nothing binds you like failing to accept forgiveness. That matter of fact, Brother Gary, that's a trick of Satan. One of the ways that Satan will hold you, keep you trapped in your past, keep you trapped in yesterday, Trapped in a place and, and in a time where you can do nothing about it is to cause you to fail to forgive yourself and to accept God's forgiveness. Forgiveness frees us all, frees us all to walk in the newness of life. And forgiveness is the great equalizer for we all need to be forgiven. Now, my time is up. I got to go. God bless you and keep you and may the God of the Bible cause himself, uh, cause his light and his love and his face to shine upon you. And tonight, come and join us right here at the upper room, Church of God in Christ for Bible study. Amen. You got it. Bible study for, for whether it's me tonight or this speaker that I have selected. One thing is for certain. They're going to teach and preach to you the Bible. God bless.